What's up YouTube, Dow here from Zephyr War Games, bringing you one of my favourite rogue decks. Um, if you can probably call it rogue, I don't know how people want to determine what rogue is and isn't, but in the short sweet sense of it, if you like a deck that not a lot of people are playing but can really irritate your opponent and get you a lot of wins, this is one of the decks for you. And that is Evil Twins Unchained. Now, Evil Twins Unchained, as it says in the name, combine the live twins of Kitakil and Leela with the Unchained Twins. Uh, and what this kind of gives you is it gives you a lot of synergy between fiends, a lot of synergy between what cards can get destroyed, what cards can't. Um, and in, it's, in this particular build, I've gone for a more control version and allowed its space as well to grow and adapt as it goes forward because we do get a brand new Kitakil monster in Lightning Overdrive as well. With all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe so you do not miss out on any more upcoming content. Obviously, Ghost of the Past comes out next week. We will have a case opening along with loads of profile updates for you as well. Plus, I will show you a one and two card combo at the end of the video uh, to keep it short, sweet, and simple and orientated towards the deck view on top of that. With all of that out of the way, let's dive straight into the profile. So, for the Unchained cards, we are playing Triple uh, Aruha. Now, the idea behind the Unchained cards is purely the fact that they like to destroy themselves. So, Aruha lets you target a card on the field that you control, destroy it, and summon itself out. So, this gives you synergy by being able to destroy the Unchained spells and traps, which will then trigger to summon out the bigger Unchained souls, which allow you to use them as link fodder to make the Unchained soul of anguish, of Unchained soul of rage, and of course, Unchained change soul of abomination so these gives you access to your boss monsters um, rage is the one you're going to go into more times than not because that does technically count as a disruption towards your opponent we're then playing two Rikia purely because this isn't a quick effect and it isn't uh, sorry it is a quick effect but it is an effect that has activates from the hand a Ruha is technically a free special summon as long as you can destroy something whereas Rikia needs to be on the board to trigger her effect so by doing so, you need to use up your normal summon of Rikia, when really you want to be using your normal summon on the evil twins, and then use Aruha to pop one of the set spell or traps, and that in turn will then allow you to bring out your Sarama, and Sarama can then set a trap, and then bring um, and then you can use Aruha to destroy Sarama, or uh, Sarama to destroy Aruha, and the circles go round and round and round, until you get the monsters onto the board, and on top of that, you're then just building up your disruptions. This will become a lot clearer once I show you the combos at the end. Speaking of which, we do play the two Sarama. Now, Sarama is the annoying one. And what I mean by this is Sarama is the card that you want to play at one, but you have to play at two. So it's kind of like the Garnet of the deck, in the sense that the normal combo is Aruha, destroy an Unchained Spell or Trap, Special Summon out Sarama. Sarama, destroy Aruha to set the Spell and Trap you've just destroyed. Um, Aruha, destruction effect, bring out the Unchained Soul of Abominable or the Unchained Soul of Disaster. And then use that with Sarama to go into your Link 2 of Unchained Soul. Now, obviously, that's the fact. You don't want a normal summon Sarama. You don't want to come out in any other way or capacity um, or him, sorry. Um, but you kind of need to play two of it because if you open up one, you still kind of want one in the deck just so your combo can continue to play. Speaking of the Unchained Souls, we do play two Abominable Unchained Soul and one Disaster. Now, Disaster is kind of nice because it allows you to use your opponent's monster as link material. But unless you're going second with this deck, which I advise going first... He's not going to be as useful. Now, Abominable Unchained Soul is a lot better because he's a much more aggressive card. What we mean by that is if a card or um, card or card you destroy, uh, you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, um, you can special summon this card from the hand. If it is special summoned, you get to discard one card and then non-target destroy a card on the field. And then during the end phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it's been destroyed on the field and sent there this turn, you can special summon it. So it gives you a bit of floatability, um, whereas Disaster is a lot more defensive of being a 3k wall, but unless you're going to summon it out during your opponent's turn, you're not going to be able to use this effect. 9 to that of 10, when you're making the combo, Soul is the one you summon from the deck, because then you're then going to use this to link Climb up, and that's where you're going to go. You're not really wanting to special summon the um, Abominable Unchained, unless you're going second. And with a lot of card effects right now, saying I don't like being targeted, um, the effect of Disaster becomes a little bit less relevant. And the fact he can't special summon himself from the hand as freely as Abominable, uh, as bon as Abominable does, I'll get there eventually, is a reason why you do 2 and 1. 
Moving on to the live twins, uh, live twins, live twins. We max out on these as much as possible. So triple key to kill and triple Leela. Um, now both of these have the same sy synergy effect that if it is normal or specialed and you control no other monsters, you can special summon the other partner from the deck. Now, obviously, this is the big hinging point because if this gets ashed, if it gets Veilers, if it gets impermed, you do struggle. And that's where Konami have tried to kind of help by giving us um, Leela Treat uh, and I believe it's Kiss to Kill Frost. Now, Leela Tweet, Tweet? God, I'll get there eventually. Leela Treat um, can special summon itself if you control a Kiss to Kill. So it's very dependent on you having to have a key to kill, and the only time it really helps evolve your plays is if you've either been stopped on your key to kill, or you special summon it as an additional monster on the board, and even then you're better off using a card like Backup Setry, um, because at least with this card, it being a generic Cyverse, you don't need to specifically have Leela or key to kill on the board. Now Frost is a different story because Frost gives you an additional draw, which is something you'll probably consider a lot more once we get her in Lightning Overdrive. But for now, you want to max out on all of these because you are also playing Triple Silent and Mining. So technically, you have nine copies um, of the Live Twins. And after you've used it once, its effect to special is very irrelevant because you're very rarely going to have a clear board after that point. And this is what catches a lot of people off guard is once you resolve the key to kill or Leela and it goes through, you've then set everything up that you need because you've got the graveyard abilities to bring back from the grave. And I think right now you're in a bit of a good situation, which is why I've gone more of a control build, um, because one of the biggest issues is getting cool by or getting got, um, DD crowed. So when we get to the hand traps, you see I play my standard hand traps of um, Ash and Ghost Ogre, but you'll probably be better off in a more defensive sense of playing um, Ash and Ghost Bell. Purely because it's such a weakness losing one of these in the graveyard because they do target the other counterpart to bring them back from the grave. Um, for your link monsters that is. That you'll probably be better off with Bell using it as a more of a counter to your opponent's counter than actually using it as a hand trap on your opponent. Um, both of these also have additional effects that your opponent, I believe this one is, which one is, your opponent has to pay 500 life points to declare an attack. And you, uh, sorry, you gain 500 life points when they declare an attack. And Leela is they have to pay 500 to declare an attack as well. Then of course the hand traps, like I said, I've got triple, go uh, triple Ash and double Ogre, but thinking about it even more, these will probably be Bells, because not only do Bells help in the current meta, um, but they can also be a, a very good deterrent and a very good defensive option for you, should your opponent try and counter your deck, which, like I said, with DD Crows flying around for Dragon Links, and with um, Call by the Grave, I know it's only at one, but Call by the Grave is a big damaging point, because then you lose your Leela effects, you, you lose your uh, key to kill effects, or the monsters for the next turn as well. Spell cards, of course, triple silent mining. Obviously, you want to get your Leela and your key to kill as early as possible. Uh, another card you could put in the deck is, of course, uh, Pot of Prosperity. Now, with Pot of Prosperity, you do have a bit of wiggle room in the extra deck, and the only idea, or the, the idea behind playing it, would be that you want to get your combo pieces as soon as possible. So your combo pieces literally open up with Leela or key to kill. That's one combo completely sorted. The other one is being able to open up with a Unchained Spell and Trap plus a Ruha. Um, so that's where you kind of want to be able to get to them as quickly as possible as you can. Now you do play Abomination Prison, which lets you get to a Ruha. So you do have searches on this, but it can also get you to an Unchained Spell or Trap, which you do ultimately play nine versions of as well. Then of course the one called by the grave, it's only at one which is a big issue right now, but you do need to try and stop that Ash or that Valor on your Kisakil or Leela right at the start, where at all possible. For the traps, as we are going more control, we are of course maxing out on the Abominable Chamber of Unchained, basically a Call of the Haunted for the Unchained cards as well, which is really, really cool. And then of course Escape of the Unchained, which is my preferred trap card, I really want to see this as a foil. Um, so purely what you can do is you target an Unchained monster you control and one card you're on the field, destroy both, and then if this set card is destroyed by card effect, you get to special on an Unchained monster, which is the exact same for a Barnable and of course the Prison as well. But the reason I like, this is both a really good card and a really bad card, is in the combo you kind of want to use your Unchained card you summon off of uh, the Sarama Destruction effect to use Sarama to make the Link 2. So the escape of the Unchained becomes a little bit harder to resolve consistently. So what you would need to do is you need to make the Link 2 and you need to have an additional extender as well. 
But that being said, if you do decide to go into the Link 3 Unchained, then this is live again and you'll get a card back to your hand from the graveyard as well. There's a lot of thought about it with your control. It's not just splash the cards out on the board because you do need to time when you activate the Evil Twin effect to bring back and pop. You do need to think about when you activate the Unchained effect to link off. And you also then need to think about how you're going to use the Unchained traps or the other traps that we play being Ice Dragon's Prison, Crackdown, and Solemn Strike. Now, if you don't have Ice Dragon Prisons, you can max out the Crackdown and Solemn Strikes to 3. The reason I've gone with this ratio of 2, 2, and 2 is because they all have very good positives and very bad negatives. So what I mean by that is Crackdown. If you can't target your opponent's monster, it's a dead card, but you should be able to deal with it. But the reason I chose Crackdown over a lot of other cards is because a lot of opponent's cards require their card to go to the graveyard. So if you were to, for example, activate a Crackdown on a White Wyvern Buster... Not only do you take the White Wyvern Buster away from them so they can't go into the Striker Dragon and then get Black Collapse, but you also stop them having a Light in the Grave, which sometimes is massively relevant that they need to get in order to then continue their Chaos plays as well. So sometimes Crackdown is actually a lot better for you than just being able to use the Unchained to link away. It's a very nice surprise factor as well because not a lot of people expect Crackdown right now um, that gets you a lot of wins. Solemn Strike is one of them cards that you want to make sure you're trapping your opponent. So what I mean by this is you want to make sure that what you're doing is you go um, activate Unchained Soul of Rage Effect to link off. And you know your opponent is going to respond and go, uh, negate. That is when you can then trap them by going, strike, stop that negate. Not only do you get rid of the negate they've actually tried to play, you also then steal their monster to make your link monster. And if you go into something like Nightmare Unicorn, you're also spinning a card back as well. So you're able to pretty much pick their board apart. Um, and strike is obviously great going first and second in the sense that you can set it, pass it. And because it's a counter trap, your opponent can't really respond to it with an additional effect. So if they went to go Savage Dragon to negate your Ice Dragon Prison, you go Strike. Not only do they lose their Savage Dragon, but you then get to resolve the Ice Dragon Prison as well. Now the Ice Dragon Prison is probably the one that is questionable that you could take out because it is quite specific to the type of decks that are being played in the meta and being played in the game. Now obviously if your opponent is playing a lot of single type decks in the form of Dragon Link, then it's going to be a very, very good card for you because not only do you take their White Wyvern Buster away, but you then get to banish the White Wyvern Buster and banish the Black Collapse. So you cause them a lot of issues because then they then can't get the material back from the White Wyvern Buster. They can't get the resource back to the hand. And it, unless they've activated Chaos Space, they're in a bit of trouble. Especially if you trigger the Ice Dragon Prison, like I said, to take away the light from the grave or the dark from the grave that they really, really need and then banish it that gives them a, another form of like a DD Crow in a sense because they'll technically be losing two monsters instead of one. And that's it for the main deck lineup. Very straightforward, simple. I, like I said, I've gone with more of control version by putting in these six trap cards. But because what makes this deck so good is it has a lot of flexible space. And what I mean by that is you could actually bump up your hand traps if you wanted to. You could bump up the consistency of certain cards in the deck that you're trying to play. You could bump up um, more control trap cards if you wanted to. So like, you, like I said, you can max out on your crackdown. You can max out on your... Um, strikes and of course the ice dragon prisons and you can also adapt it to trap cards that will be effective during your locals or against certain matchups depending on what you need so that's what makes this deck so good in my opinion is it's got a lot of variety it's got a lot of space and the best thing about it is it's not exactly dominating the meta so it's a safe investment for the future as well plus on top of that it's already getting new support and it's not as if it's getting like a whole set of new support it's getting one or two cards here and there that's providing support to it which does mean that in the future we could possibly be looking at even more support for the live twins and even more support for the unchained twins as well which in my opinion would be absolutely amazing because i love the unchained law and i love the unchained deck alongside being able to make it relevant uh well more relevant than usual and playing it with of course the live twins as well which surprisingly are very very good uh moving on to the extra deck we do play triple evil twin kisa kill so well i'll go with double leela as well so the reason i've gone with three and two is because you really only need to worry about like kisa kill is your main one this is one you want to go for and when you're doing the combo what you need to understand is that they all have effects when they're brought back from the grave with the other card so Kisa kill has the effect that if this card is special summoned and you control a leela monster you can draw one card um, during the main phase, if you do not control a Leela monster, quick effect, you can special on one Leela monster from your graveyard. 
Um, also, you cannot special on monsters for the extra deck for the rest of the turn, except fiends, which is perfectly fine because all of your cards, pretty much apart from one, are going to be fiends. Leela does the exact same effect. She can bring back Kisa Kill from the graveyard. Um, but obviously, when Leela is special summoned while you control a Kisa Kill, she lets you target and destroy a card on the field. So she can be the aggressor, but she can also be the extender by bringing her back to pop one of your unchained spell or traps as well. Um, obviously, Evil Twin Kisa Kill requires two monsters, including the Kisa Kill monster, and Leela requires at least a Leela. So, what you need to do during your first turn combo is you're like, right, okay, do I need the draw? Am I missing something in my hand for my combo pieces I need to draw for? Or do you go, right, I've got the Unchained card, all I need to do is bring out the Leela. So the way this usually works is your, your normal summon the key to kill or the Leela, get the other one to the board, and then you link into Leela if you want the pop, or you go into key to kill if you want the draw, because the way it works is the first one you link into is going to bring back the effect monster from the graveyard to link into the other one, and the other one is going to bring back the link monster. Then what you could do is you could go into a Link 4 here, but you'd only be able to go into a Link 4 Fiend. What you usually want to try and do is you want to try and use the Unchained combo to link away the Leela by putting the Leela in the graveyard. What that means is during your opponent's turn, not only do you have an Unchained Soul of Rage, you should also have one of the Unchained Traps, but you also have the ability to bring back Leela and pop, all from two cards. So the plan is bring back Leela, pop a card, um, use Unchained Soul of Rage to link away one of your opponent's cards, go into Unicorn to discard and spin a card. So straight away from two cards, you've made, have, made sure you've got free interruptions, and that's not even including the spell and trap of the Unchained that you might have, or the Strike, Crackdown, or um, Ice Dragon Prison as well. Three and two is more than enough because Key to Kill is the one you go into more times than not. You can bump Leela up to three, perfectly fine. I don't own a third copy. I... I don't know if I would put it at 3 if I did anyway. Uh, for the Unchained cards, of course, we've got the 2 Rage, the 1 Anguish, and the 1 Abomination. Now, obviously, Abomination is your Aggressor, um, Anguish is your Link during your turn, and Rage is the Interrupter by linking during your opponent's turn. Then, of course, you've got the Nightmares. So, in the Nightmares, we've got the 1 Cerberus, the 1 Phoenix, the 1 Unicorn, and the 1 Griffin. Now, what makes these so good is you can actually link into a griffin during your opponent's turn, and as long as it is connected by Leela or Kisa Kill, which they both have the right zones you need, you're basically skill draining your opponent, which is really kind of cool. The one good thing about all of the Nightmares is they are fiends, so you can go into them using not only your Unchained cards, but you can also go into them using your Kisa Kill and Leela cards during your turn as well. Keep in mind that some of your cards may lock you into Dark Fiends, which I believe is the Unchained cards. So you've just got to keep that in mind. But like I said, the chances are you're all going to be making these during your opponent's turn before you're even locked into anything. Um, Unicorn, of course, if you were to summon this and then got a Leela and a Kisa kill point into it, you get additional draws during your draw phase as well. Then moving on for the other Link monster that is a Fiend is the Underworld Goddess. Now, this is the card that I would probably take out for a third Leela, purely because you're only ever going to be able to link summon it during your turn. Now, there's no way of link summon it using the Unchained Soul of Rage, because Rage says this card and one other opponent's monsters, whereas this needs specifically four monsters to make. If you're going to do it during... There's no other card that can do it during your opponent's turn, but if you're going to do it during your turn, of course, all you need to do is you need to get your Link 2 of Leela or Key to Kill, or you can use both of them, plus one more of your monsters, because then you treat one of the key to kills or leelas as a link one, then you use the other one as a link two, the final monster as the remaining link that makes it a link four, and then you use still one of your opponent's monsters to make it the link five. Then the out and out aggressor of the deck is access code talker, because again, as long as you haven't used leela or key to kills effect during your turn, and you've got both of them on the board, straight away you link the pair of them together, you go into access code, you've already got a dark in the grave. If you've also made the ability to go into a Griffin or a Phoenix or a Cerberus at any point during your opponent's turn, yes, Axis Code's only going to gain 2k, but it's going to have multiple attributes in the graveyard to start banishing and popping, and it just gives you a 4k beat monster that's going to be able to get over your opponent's cards. Not to mention that if you're then able to trigger off the Unchained cards, or if you're then able to keep maintain a Leela or Kisa Kill, and then you can bring back the other Kisa Kill from the grave, you're getting a draw or a pop as well. The one thing that Leela and Kisuke are missing, the Link Monsters, is a way of boosting their attack, is a way of getting them above 1100, because right now 1100 isn't out and out amazing and can actually struggle to deal with some of the simplest of monsters, um, but it's something you need to look into. Keep in mind as well, if you co-link the Phoenix and the Cerberus, you're protected from battle and card effects. 
So that's it for the deck list. Very straightforward and simple. I'm now going to reset the board state and show you the two combos that you're going to need just to know the basics of this deck and how you can get everything going. So we'll be back in a sec. So the two card combo. I know there are much more than two cards in front of you, but these are any variation that you need. You need one card from this column plus a discard for the Mayanet, or you get one from this column as well. So the one card combo is literally taking away mining because you'll need the discard, but it's literally any one of these. If you've got the discard as well, mining can then come into play. But the idea is behind the one card combo, and then the two card combo is literally any one of the Unchained. The best one to have is Escape because it gives you another form of disruption. Otherwise, any of the others will do. We will use Escape for this example purely because it just shows you that it gives you a little bit more. Keeping in mind that Prison can, of course, also search you out Escape um, as well. And we'll go with a Live Twin Kisa Kill. Now, we'll go with a one-card combo, very straightforward and simple. Normal summon your Kisa Kill. I'm going to leave these zones free for the moment. Um, so you normal summon your Kisa Kill, got no other monsters on the board, Kisa Kill summons Leela. Now you need to decide. If you're playing Prosperity, obviously you're always going to go for the pop, um, because the idea is that if you've activated and resolved Prosperity, you've ended up getting into your final combo piece that you're going to need. So from here, obviously what you're going to do is you're going to link these two together depending if you want the pop or the draw. If you want the draw, you go for Kisa Kill first. If you want the pop, you go for Leela first. So you go into Leela. Uh, Leela will then trigger her effect to bring back the Kisa Kill from the graveyard. You then then Kisa Kill and Leela to make your Kisa Kill monster. Use the effect of Kisa Kill, bring back Leela, pop a card. So that's pretty much how that ends. Very simple, very straightforward. Now, all you do is if you add the Escape of the Unchained to this combo, the way this now works is you do that exact same play, but Leela will then target the set Escape of the Unchained. This will then destroy the Escape of the Unchained, putting it to the graveyard, and you probably what you want to go for is you're probably going to want to go for your Aruha. If you go for your Sarama as well, this is where you need another Unchained to play around with. So if you do then have a Ruha in the hand already, then your Escape of the Unchained can trigger an additional effect and summon out another card, which will probably be Sarama. But the idea behind this is, if we take it back a little step as well, let's say we use the Key to Kill draw. So all you do is you just switch these guys around. We use the Key to Kill draw and we drew into the Ruha. So you then set the Escape of the Unchained. Uh, sorry, I mean, so when you destroy this in the previous combo, what you do is you bring out the Unchained Soul and you use Unchained Soul and Leela to go into the Unchained Soul of Rage. And then what you have the ability there is you've got two forms of disruption in the form that you've got um, the effect of Key to Kill to bring back Leela to pop a card and then you'll have the effect of Unchained Soul of Rage to link away a card. But in this example here, let's say we went for the draw, we draw it into a Ruha. A Ruha will target Escape the Unchained, destroy this and Special Summon itself. This, keep in mind, this has locked you into Fiends. This now locks you into Dark Fiends from the extra deck. Trigger the effect of Escape of the Unchained to summon out the Sarama. Sarama will then use her effect to char target the Escape of the Unchained in the graveyard and Aruha. She will then set the Escape of the Unchained. She will destroy the Aruha. Aruha's effect will then go off to bring out an Unchained Soul of Disaster or Rage or anything like that. Now, what you could do as well, if you wanted to, is you could bring out Arikia. Just to deck thin a little bit more, because Enrique can then use her effect to pop the Sarama, and then Sarama brings out the Disaster. Then what you want to do here is you want to use the Disaster plus, ideally Leela, to go into your Rage. And by doing it this way, if you haven't gone for the pop route, by doing it this way, it does leave your extra monster zone free, which is quite important sometimes as well. And then what you want to do here is you pass your opponent's turn. Now during your opponent's turn, what you have the ability for is you have the ability to use Key to Kill to bring back Leela to pop a card. You also have the effect of Unchained Soul of Rage to link away with your opponent's card. And then you also have the effect of Escape of the Unchained to destroy Reikia. Um, and by destroying Reikia, you can then trigger to special summon a card. And if you wanted to, you could bring out the Abominable Unchained. And as long as you've got a discard, you can discard to pop a card. Keep in mind that when you link with the Unchained Soul of Rage, you can either go into a Link 4, which would be Griffin. So that gives you a skill drain by putting it next to your Kisa Kill or the Leela. Or you can go into a Unicorn, which will give you another discard, to then discard, and because it'll be co-linked, you'll draw a card as well. So you'll discard, you'll draw, you'll then pop a card, and then that's where you can save the trap, because the card you drew off of the Unicorn can then be used for the Abominable Unchained Soul as well. So you've ended up just pretty much going spin, pop, link, spin, pop, link. It's very good, very entertaining. I really, really like this deck. 
I think it puts in so much work and it's so underrated for what it does. Um, it's definitely a deck you shouldn't be sleeping on. And if you like the idea of this concept, then it's definitely a deck to look into. And like I said, it's already got the range of deciding whether it wants to go full on control and play a lot more traps, or if it wants to go more aggressive and play more hand traps, or you could play even more cyverse combo pieces. You can max out on your Leela treats just to make sure you've got the ability to resolve uh, and special summon it should you get hit with a hand trap. But um, with all of that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Until next time, guys, as absolutely always, stay safe and happy dueling.